Hello everybody, my name is Schwan, and in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to properly administrate a mumble server that you bought from tragicservers.com. So the first step is you go ahead and buy the server. So we'll go to mumble, we'll go to whatever slots we want. Notice that 15 slots is only $8.50 a month. We'll go to order now. And there's a couple things I want to talk about on the screen, which is why I brought it up. Your username and password will be used. This is not used in Mumble. This is just used for the Mumble control panel that you see right by my cursor. Mumble control panel. And what that is used is to just change like settings for your Mumble, but you don't actually need it to join your Mumble server. Just keep that in mind. This, these two fields will only be used for tragicservers.com, not Mumble. Now your super user password needs to be something that you'll use to initially set up your server and will you'll use inside the program mumble but not on tragicservers.com and that's basically and if you want a server password you can add it here if you want a server password later you can add it from the control panel and that's all I wanted to talk about on this screen and the next thing I want to talk about is the email you get so you will get an email that looks something like this from tragic servers and it'll tell you the details for your server and the details for your mumble control panel I don't have the details for the Mumble control panel because I didn't actually buy this server. Uh, Tragic just gave it to me for this tutorial. But you'll have more information in this email, don't worry. Now the first thing to do is go to Mumble and then go to Server, Connect, and make sure public internet is minimized. Make sure the arrow is pointing towards it and then the arrow is pointing down for favorites. That way you can um, only see the servers that you add instead of like random public servers constantly, which is real annoying. So if you go to add new, a screen will pop up that looks something like this. Um, I've already done this and it looks like this. Now the label can be anything you want. Every user can have a different label, doesn't matter, it can be whatever you want. Um, the second label, address, is this part of um, the IP and port. Okay, just that part. And then port is 64738 is this part of the URL that he put in the email. Now the super user password we'll go into a little bit later, but you'll see we have the address filled out, the port filled out, and the username. It can be whatever we want, whatever we're going to use when we connect to this server normally. So, again, press OK, and we'll double click on the server. Now, my name's Schwan, and my, my friend Milo is in here. But however, what I'm going to the first thing I want to do, and I hope you guys are following this in order, is you connect as the name that you want. Right click on yourself, register, press yes. You'll see an icon appear over on this side, and that just tells you that your name is reserved on the server. No one else can come in here and pretend to be Schwan because my name's already taken. They would have to be Schwan1 or something else that isn't exactly what mine is. And that's going to come in handy when we're going to add people as administrators. So we'll go ahead and disconnect from the server now. And this time, we're going to press edit. You can just do that by right-clicking on any of the servers, pressing edit. And you can, and instead of logging in as Schwan, I'm going to log in as super user, and once I do that, a password field pops up, and then this is the super user password, and you'll get that in your email right here. So mine is tragic servers, see, super user password. So we go back to Mumble, and now remember, super user is spelled with a capital S and a capital U, and it's one word. Also, there can't be any spaces after address or port. That's, that's something that a lot of people mess up, it's going to do copy and paste wrong, for example. So if there's a space in the address like this. It doesn't look like there is, but if you look, there actually is a space here, and then it won't work. So make sure there's no space. See? Calm. No space. Just a tip in general. Now we're going to connect to super user, so we'll click here. Now if you see, super user is just the admin, and I can't actually talk as super user. I can't even unmute myself. You cannot actually use Mumble as super user, but you can set it up for different kinds of things. So the first thing we're going to do is add an administrator. Now, if you remember, I already logged in as Schwan and registered myself on the Mumble server. So now if I right click on root, okay, I press edit, then I click on the groups tab, go to admin, I can add members. Now, I'm just going to type in Schwan, and what you're going to see when I press add is it's going to be italicized and then it's going to go to regular font. And I'll talk about that in a second. Just make sure you see it. It was real quick. You might have saw it though. And what it was, but if this name was italicized, that means you did it wrong. If it's italicized, it means that the user you added wasn't a registered name, and it won't work. 
So make sure before you add people to the admin group that they are registered on Mumble and that you spell their name right. Now, moving on, we press OK. Now we probably don't ever have to log in as super user ever again. Um, we might have to, so remember, make sure you keep the password somewhere, but it's unlikely. So we'll go to edit, then we'll just log in as Schwann again, only this time we'll be an admin. And we'll go and delete the password field, press OK, click on Tragic Servers, and as you see, I still have that registered icon because I'm a registered user. And if I go to server and registered users, if I'm an admin, I have access to this, and you'll see the, a list of the people who are registered on your server. So if you were adding an admin and didn't know how to spell their name or how they spelled it in Mumble, you could pull up server registered users. Now there's also an important thing to note here. There's something called Mumble certificates. I will not get into it in detail, but let's say that someone who was registered as um, Mile, for example, let's say Mile is registered, but then he reinstalls Windows or he gets a new computer or something happens and he doesn't back up his like Mumble certificate and he joins your server, he won't be able to join under the name Mile because it's registered and doesn't realize that he's a real Mile. So if a situation like that comes up where someone wants the name Mile but it's taken, you can just go to registered, registered users and remove that name and then the user can connect and you can re-register them. So I hope that makes sense, but that's just a general tip for registered users, and that happens a little bit. But now that I have admin, I can right-click on root, and I can press edit, and I can add other admins. So I can go to admin group, which is a group of editing, and I could make Mile an admin. However, if you realize from what happened before, see how Mile isn't registered and he didn't appear on the server registered users list? I can't actually make him an admin. So I'm, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and register him. Um, I actually can't register him. Maybe that is not a feature I can use currently. Uh, normally, I, I would try it on your own. If you can right-click on someone and press register, you can normally register other people. It's kind of a weird feature. Maybe it's turned off in this current server version. But just make, make sure you tell them they need to right-click on themselves and then press register, which I've already done. So, um, the next thing I want to talk about is adding channels. So we'll just right-click on root, press add, and then type in channel 1. And that makes a new channel. Now you can make sub-channels. So if I added another channel called channel 2, this one won't actually be a sub-channel. Well, it will, it's just sub-channel of root. So see channel 1 and channel 2. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to edit this, I could right-click on it, I could press edit, and I could make this oops, TF2. Alright, so once I made it TF2, now you see how it's changed positions with channel 2? Well, I want TF2 to be on the top, because TF2 is important and a great game. So let's go ahead and press edit, and you'll see that its position is 0. And the channel 2's position is also 0. Every channel you add is 0, so it'll be based off of alphabetically. It'll be alphabetically ordered if you don't change the position. So let's go ahead and change this, and by the way, in programming and general computer stuff, you start counting at 0, not 1. So 0, 1 would be the next one, and you'll see that TF2 jumps up to the top because now its position is 0, and the second channel's position is 1. All right, so that's just how you order channels. And here's how you make a sub-channel. You just make sure you're selecting the channel that you want to make a sub-1. Press Add, type in red, and then you have this arrow here, just like on the server browser list, and you can see the subchannels that are associated with TF2. So if we clicked on red, we could add another channel that said whatever. Okay. Oh, invalid channel name. All right, we'll just do we'll do red two. Now see, red has a subchannel. Um, I would suggest you don't get too crazy with subchannels, but you know the feature is there. Um, so we got TF2, we got red. Let's go ahead and make a blue. All right, now, oh, remember, here's how you edit channels. Edit, take out the E, because that's not how TF2 rolls. And we got red and blue. Now, remember, if we wanted red on the top, we could change blue to 1. And they would switch places, because it would be go from 0 to 1. So once you have these sub-channels, you can join them, of course. Now, if, let's say, you had people in the red channel and people in the blue channel, and if they, everyone wanted to talk to each other, for instance, let's say if the game was over, you have a couple options. They could all move channels, 
or since you're an admin you can move them into whatever channel by clicking on their name and dragging it into whatever channel you want to move them to and you can move them all to one channel or if I wanted to talk to everyone in the blue channel but I didn't want to ha take the time to move them I could just right click on blue and press link and you'll see that the antennas color changes the tip change so now these channels are linked together temporarily or permanently they're linked together and we can hear we can talk to each other even though we're in different channels and then when I want to, when I want that to end I can right click on blue again and press unlink and then it's normal channels again I can't hear this channel so that's another feature of channels um, the next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to do how to ban someone so banning someone's relatively easy you just right click on their username and you press ban you can also kick them you can mute them and when you mute them you'll see that it's a blue icon and when you mute yourself for example it's a red icon so you know if they're muted by a server no one can hear them that's a blue icon that's server stuff so we're going to unmute them by right clicking on them again and taking off the check mark and that's basically it um, let me try to think if I have anything else that I want to do uh, let's see banning someone getting user admin um, that's basically all I wanted to talk about oh no there's one more thing so let's say let's go ahead and go back to the root channel and I can move my back to the root channel as well so let's go ahead and delete these channels we can just press remove all right so this channel is public channel 2 is public but let's make a password protected channel so you can join the server without a password however you ha we can make one channel in here that requires a password to go into that can be useful depending on your situation so we'll go ahead and press add we'll do password channel okay now we have a password channel and if we press edit on this channel this screen comes up again we can change the name we can change the position we can also add a password so let's make the password uh, tragic servers and press OK now since I'm an admin I don't actually need to put that password anywhere I can just move wherever the hell I want because I'm an admin however mile can't go into this password channel on his own uh, he would get denied access now what mile would need to do and anyone else that wants access to this password channel is go to server access tokens add and then type tragic servers and that's it and then press OK now they've added that access token and you can view all the access tokens you've added for the current server you're in by just going to server access tokens and with that access token added he can join the password that corresponds with that access token just like that um, so that's another way to do it and the last thing I want to show would be the I showed you the registered user list okay now we're going to talk about banning people so we'll go ahead and we'll do a we can also deafen so they can't hear and they can't talk but that's a little bit mean so we'll undo that now we'll do a ban on mile and so the reason because you are bad at tf2 we're going to press ok and you'll see down here mile was kicked and banned from the server by schwan because you are bad at tf2 and if we go to the server and then ban list, we'll see the IP address of that user and the reason why we banned him. Now, what we can do if we want to unban him, for instance, he apologized and he's like, you know what, Schwan, I know I'm a bad soldier. I know I'm bad at TF2. I don't deserve to be an invite player. I'll say, all right, you know what? You're forgiven. And then I would go into the server um, ban list. And then I would click on the IP address that I had banned for him, and then I would say remove. Hit OK, and then Mile would be able to join the server again. And there he is. So that's it. That's the end of this Mumble tutorial. I went through how to create a channel, a sub channel, how to order a channel, how to put a password on a channel, how to link a channel, and much a bunch of other stuff. And that's basically it. If you have any other questions, you can submit a ticket on tragicservers.com. But I hope you won't have to because I've covered a lot of information in this video. And enjoy your mumble usage.